Lenz's Law is probably harder than you think. And I mean, I think it's like one of the hardest conceptual topics for students to understand in the second semester of physics. So let's go over Lenz's Law. Let's just do it. I'm going to do everything I'm going to do right here. So we have to start off with Faraday's Law. So this is a demo. You've seen this demo before. A magnet moves into this coil. This little thing right here shows that there is a current when there's a when the magnet's moving in or when it's magnet's moving out. Not when there's a magnetic field in the coil, right? It has to be moving. And if you switch it around, it goes the other way. Yay, awesome. Okay, that's Faraday's Law. We do need to talk about that. So Faraday's Law says that there is a magnetic flux. Uh, the magnetic flux is kind of like how much magnetic field passes through an area. It's not the best de definition, but that's, that's, what, that's what you could think of it. So it depends on the strength of the magnetic field. It depends on the size of the area, but also the angle between the area and the field, and we'll look at that later. Uh, so then we have this idea of electromotive force. It's basically a voltage, okay? But the electromotive force is kind of like uh, a non-battery voltage. No, it's batteries too, okay. So, but anyway, Faraday's law says that the electromotive force depends on the rate of change of the magnetic flux. So a constant flux, no, no electromotive force. Now, you may see this in your book and it says, well, there was an N in my book. It said EMF is N delta phi over delta T. Okay, that's fine. The N is just because if you have more than one loop, it's kind of like making a larger area. So the N is just the number of loops, that's fine. Now, you also might have had a negative sign in yours. That I don't like. Okay, because we can't really define directions of EMFs uh, in flux in this version of Faraday's law. The negative sign actually comes over from the real version of Maxwell's equations, which you probably didn't see. So just don't worry about the negative sign. It's not a big deal. Um, people will say, oh, that's about Lenz's. The negative sign is Lenz's law. Fine, whatever. Okay, now this is important. Faraday's law says that actually what we make is an electric field. A changing magnetic flux makes an electric field. And I like to call these, based on another book, curly electric fields. So a cur here's a picture. So right over here, I have a positive charge and it makes these electric fields that point away from it, okay? Those are like Coulomb electric fields. That's what we think about when we think about electric fields. Notice that if I, enter, if I find the voltage around a closed loop with a Coulomb field, I get zero, zero. Now, a curly field, here, if I have a changing magnetic field, I get an electric field that looks like this shape. So it, it makes, it doesn't look like the field due to positive charge, and you couldn't even make it due to charges. But also, if I, if I find the voltage around this loop, since I'm always going in the same direction as the electric field, I do get a voltage. I do get an EMF. That's kind of important. Okay. Now we're ready. Lenz's Law. I'm going to give you the text-based description, and then we'll go over it in all the glory details with some examples. So the first is a changing magnetic flux creates an electric field. That's Faraday's law. Okay, we already said that. If this changing, if this curly electric field is in an electric conductor, then there will also be an electric current, right? If I have an electric field in a conductor, then the free charges can move and you get a current. Now, the Lenz's law is all about the direction of that induced electric current. That's what Lenz's law says. It says that that electric current is also going to make a magnetic field, and that magnetic field will be in, in the direction to oppose the change in flux. That's really hard. I know it's hard. Okay. That's just what it says. <clears throat> okay. Now we need to get to this. This is the right-hand rule. Because if I have, if I want to talk about electric currents making magnetic fields, I need to know what direction those magnetic fields are. So here's a loop of current. It's coming this way. It's kind of hard to see. I'll show you in just a second. And this makes a, a dipole magnetic field. But this is what it looks like, right? So, but if I take my right hand and I let my fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic, of the electric current, my thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field, okay? So that's the right-hand rule. There's more than one right-hand rule, but that's right. If I put my, let my fingers curl in the direction of the current, thumb in the direction of the magnetic field in the center, okay? So the, the magnetic field's more complicated than that, but that, you get that, okay. Let's look at our first example. So here I have a loop of wire, 
and I, I kind of highlighted the area where we were talking about the flux. And here's a magnet, and it's going to make a magnetic field, the red arrow right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the magnet towards the loop, and we can see what happens. So you'll notice that the magnetic field is getting larger, right, as it goes towards the loop, and then the yellow arrows represent the electric current. So go ahead and take your fingers and is my is my thing backwards? No, it's not. And and let your fingers of your right hand curl in the direction of that current, and you can see that the magnetic field due to this current is going to be to the left. Okay, and so that's the opposite direction of this magnetic field from the magnet. Not and that's not important. The important thing is that it opposes the change. This is increasing in a magnetic field to the right. So the loop wants to make a magnetic field that says no, no, no don't increase goes the other way i don't like change that's what it says if it had feelings and currents don't have feelings but we can pretend they do okay let's look at another example very similar what if i take that magnet and i pull it away from the coil so again my magnetic field do the magnets to the right but when i pull it away what happens Notice that the direction of the current, induced current, is the opposite direction. So if I take my right hand and go this way, that current is going to make a magnetic field going in the same direction. Let's back up a little bit. So here we go, right there. So right there, see the magnetic field due to the magnet and due to the induced current are in the same direction. But that's because the magnetic field is decreasing so the magnetic flux is decreasing this wants to make the magnetic flux not decrease okay it, you have to practice these things it takes a lot of time let's look at a real life example here is a copper plate and i have a magnet near it and what's going to happen when i pull that magnet away the copper plate swings i didn't touch the plate okay and copper is not ferromagnetic it does not interact with a magnet when it's stationary. But when I pull it away, I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm decreasing the magnetic field through the plate. So the plate's gonna make a magnetic field in the same direction, and that's gonna make those two things attract. So they're attracted when I pull it away. You could do the other one and move it towards there and it, it pushes the plate, but I, I end up hitting the plate. So I like to pull it away. So that's an, a physical example of Linz's law. If those were not in the, in the same direction when I pulled it away, the plate would swing away, right? And that would be really weird. Here is a that same copper plate. I'm going to take just a normal mass and let it slide down the plate. No big deal. Now if I take a magnet and let it slide down the plate, yes, the friction is a little bit different, but you can see that you get a vastly different motion. So in this case, what's happening? Well, as that magnet moves over different parts of the plate, it induces a current. It changes the flux of that part of the plate. And that makes a magnetic field that opposes the change. So that's why the magnetic force is pushing up the plane. The faster you push it, the greater the force because the greater the flux. And so you get this uh, eddy current type effect, uh, which is kind of cool. Okay, another example. Now we're going to take the magnet and let the plate rotate. So what's going to happen there? So the magnetic field doesn't change, but the flux does change, right? So since the loop is rotating, less magnetic field passes through that loop, so the flux is decreasing. That means that the current wants to make a magnetic field in the same direction as that magnetic field to, to keep it from changing, to keep it from decreasing. Okay, one more example. I think I got one more example. This one's pretty good, and it took me a while to make this animation, just what you know. So here I have a constant magnetic field, but it's only in a, in a specified region. Now I'm going to pull, I have a, a square loop. I'm going to pull it out, okay? Now the cyan area represents the part where there's a flux, because once it starts getting out of the magnetic field, then only part, the area is going to decrease, right? So the area of the loop's not going to decrease, but the area of the flux is. So let's see what happens. So now the question is, what direction will the current be in the loop when it leaves the magnetic field? You know, pause the video for a little bit and see if you can figure that out. If you can do it, th that's a good problem, okay? Of course, you know, I'm going to show you the answer because do the answer. So here is the loop at some point, and I'm showing you the direction of the current. But let's first look at the magnetic flux, right? The magnetic field 
uh, is pointing down. So the flux is that way. And as the, the loop leaves, the area gets smaller, so the flux decreases. That means the induced current wants to make a magnetic field in the same direction, which would be down. So now I can use my right-hand rule, and you can see that the magnetic, the electric current would be going this way and then make a magnetic field going down. And then here's a, here's a little, you can see it from different directions. Now, <clears throat> here's the fun part. What about the force on this wire? So as I pull this wire out and I have an induced current, then we do have a magnetic, let's see, a magnetic force. So we can calculate the magnetic force IL cross B, right? So that means that we take IL as the direction of the current, B is the direction of the magnetic field, and the force would be perpendicular to both of those, and we can use the right-hand rule. You can use this one to find the direction. So let's look at the total force on this wire. Over here, there's a current, but there's no magnetic field, so there's no force. Over here, we have IL going this way, B is down, so the force is pushing this way. On this side, it's the opposite. Now the current's going that way, so the force pushes this way. So this force and that force are pulling it apart, but they cancel, right? They're the same. So that leaves just this one wire right over here. The current's going this way, the magnetic field's down, so the force is that way. Why do we care? Because this says that if I want to pull that that loop out at a constant velocity, then I'm gonna to have to apply a force, right? And to give the net force of zero. So I don't get it for free, I have to pull it. I have to do something to get that current. I'm actually making that current, not for free, but because I'm applying a, a force. If Lenz's law were the opposite, then this current would be going the other way, and this force would be going this way. This force would push the coil out without anything this coil would increase in speed and that would that would increase the rate of change of flux and that would increase the current which would increase the speed right so you see it, it, it would just make a situation if Lenz's law was the opposite it would make a situation where you would put this coil in there you not only would you get energy for free but it would it would explode and things just don't explode so okay so that's it for Lenz's law um, I, you're going to have to practice. Just right-hand rule, oppose the change in flux. You got it. I believe in you. Talk to you later. I'm going to stop. Okay, there it is.